In this video, we will finish our discussion of the chain rule by looking at the fast way that it is applied. For our first example, you want to try to break this down into an outside function and an inside function. Rather than using y and u like I was doing previously, I'm going to mention it a little bit different. The outside function would be something involving the fourth power. So let's just call it that, the fourth power. But then the inside is going to be what's actually inside the parentheses, the x squared plus 9. Now, the chain rule is always the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So the outside function is this fourth power. What do I do with powers? I bring them to the front, and then I subtract 1 from them. So here's how it works. Take the fourth power and bring it to the front. But now, when you do the derivative of the outside, you will always leave the inside alone. So I'm going to leave my x squared plus 9 as is, and then I'll subtract 1 from my power. I'm not finished yet, but this is the start. Again, I took the fourth power and brought it to the front, and then subtracted 1. And I just left the inside alone. Take the derivative of the outside and leave the inside alone. Then I'm going to do times the derivative of the inside, which often I will just write like this. So you have the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, which I haven't taken yet. Let me finish it. 4 times x squared plus 9 cubed times 2x. I could simplify that a little bit. Let's write this as 8x times x squared plus 9 cubed. Next example. If you think about the outside and you look at the function, you should see that there is just a log here. There's a 5 in front, so I'll let it be part of that, but I'm just going to say the ln thing is on the outside. For the inside, I'm going to say what's inside the parentheses, t squared plus 2. So what's really going on is when I take the derivative, I need to think about the derivative of the outside. For natural log of u, you would turn it to 1 over u. So anytime you see the natural log, it's just going to become over whatever is here. So I get 5, because that was the coefficient, over 3t squared plus 2. That's the derivative of the outside, because the natural log becomes 1 over whatever was in there, times the derivative of the inside, which again I'll write in this fashion. So you have the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And when I do that, I get 5 over 3t squared plus 2, and the derivative of 3t squared plus 2 is 6t, which I can then combine to get 30t over 3t squared plus 2. This problem would be an example of the power form of the chain rule. This problem would be an example of the log form of the chain rule. Keep in mind the power form can also include roots. With that idea in mind, for this one, this is a form of the power, and I could use the one-half power, but I have a special rule. Remember I told you that the derivative of square root of x has a rule that's so common you might as well memorize it to be 1 over 2 square root of x. And I'm going to use that right here. The derivative would be using this rule, which would be 1 over 2 times the square root of, leave the inside alone, 3 minus 2e to the 4t, times the derivative of the inside. Just rewrite the inside and I'll put a prime. And by the way, if you get decently good at derivatives that you want to go ahead and calculate this in the same step, feel free. I have no complaint about that whatsoever. I end up with 1 over 2 square root of 3 minus 2e to the 4t. And then I just need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The 3 is going to disappear. And then I've got a negative 2 for the coefficient. And e to the 4t is the e to the kt rule, whose derivative is always k e to the kt, I get 4e to the 4t. Now let's simplify this just a little bit. 
I notice the 2's can cancel. And that leaves me with negative 4 e to the 4t over the square root of 3 minus 2e to the 4t. This last one fits the format of the e rule that we've talked about. The e rule is the last form of the chain rule. And for the e rule, it will always be that your outside is just e to the u, or e to a power, and the inside is the whole power. So when I take the derivative, Again, the outside function is e to something, and the derivative of e to the u is just e to the, leave the inside alone. x plus e to the x is my inside. Then I'll multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now I know this looks a little funny with two e's floating around, but the exponent is just x plus e to the x, and that is your inside, whereas your outside is the e to some power. So then I get e to the x plus e to the x, and the derivative of x plus e to the x is 1, plus derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and I'll just leave this as my answer, even though it's a little bit weird looking.